Have you been practicing your crochet stitches and you are sick of swatching? Well, I've got a project for you that is real and useful. Stay tuned. This beginner friendly project is the perfect project. It is a dishcloth and a dish towel and it's made of this wonderful cotton that is very absorbent but yet dries easily and has a little bit of texture so it's always very good to have in a dishcloth. Picks up everything. You will love it. Links to everything you need to make this project will be in the description below. I used Lily Sugar and Cream yarn, 100% cotton worsted weight, and a J crochet hook. You'll begin with a slip stitch over your hook, and then you will make 31 chain stitches as your foundation chain. In the second chain from the hook, you're going to make your first single crochet, and you'll put one single crochet in each chain stitch all the way across to the end. At the end, you should have a total of 30 single crochets. At the end of this first row, it's very important to count your stitches. This will allow you to be sure that all future rolls, rows are built on the correct number of stitches. And this uh, count, I would say count about every third or fourth row, especially as you're beginning. Make sure you count that end stitch. You should have 30. You're going to chain one and turn your work. This is your pattern row, and you're going to repeat this row all the way across. One single crochet in the base of that chain in your first stitch, chain one. Skip a stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, chain one. Skip a stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, chain one. Skip a stitch, single crochet in the next sit stitch, chain one all the way across the row. When you get to the last three stitches on your on your row, you're going to put a sing, single crochet, you're going to skip one, put a single crochet in the second stitch, and a single crochet in the last stitch. So you have two single crochets together. You're always going to have a single crochet at the end of each row. Chain one and turn. And begin this next row with my helper, Finnegan, and you're going to put your first single crochet in that first stitch. Chain one. And now find the chain one space from the row below, right there, and that's where your next single crochet is going to go. Chain one. Find the chain space and single crochet in that chain space. Chain one and single crochet in the chain space. You're going to finish this row the same way, ending with two single crochets at the end of the row. I invite you to check us out on Instagram. We are just now beginning to get active on Instagram at Servant Crafts. 
and also follow us on Facebook. We have a page on Facebook. So we'd love to have you join us and share your projects as well as ours. Make sure you always catch that last single crochet at the end of the row. Remember, sometimes it can get a little tight and you have to kind of work to get through and get both loops on your hook and get that last single crochet in. Chain one and turn your work. You're going to complete a total of 24 rows. In So you're gonna complete from row three to row 24 exactly as you did in row two. On the 25th row, which is this is the row that we're beginning right here, we are going to put one single crochet in each stitch. So a single crochet in the first single crochet and a single crochet in every chain space. So single in the single crochets, single crochet in the chain space. When you get to the end of this row, you should have 30 single crochets in this row. Then you are going to uh, make your last, uh, you're gonna make a last chain stitch and pull that tight at the end of the row in a nice loop and uh, snip it off. All right, you've finished your dishcloth. Now all you need to do is to weave in these tail ends. I would caution, first of all, you need a tapestry needle and I would always invest in metal tapestry needles or yarn needles. Uh, they just work and last so much better. Make sure that your tail is long enough. You're gonna see here that I don't, I skimp on my tails. To thread the tapestry needle, the easiest thing to do is to fold your yarn over the end of the needle and get it really tight. And then slip your needle out and that really tight fold you've got, you need to push that through the eye of the needle. Now you're gonna work this thread across through the legs of the crochet that you've worked about, I would say four or five, maybe six stitches there and then you're going to pull the yarn through, but you're not done. And as you can see, a short thread is a challenge. Now, you just say you've just gone through six uh, stitches or six legs of yarn, and now you're going to turn and skip the stitch that you just came through Go over the top of that and now go back the way you came underneath the last five. So you've got one stitch that kind of anchors your weave in so that if you were to pull the end when you're done, it cannot pull through and it's kind of locks it or, uh, you know, just anchors it through and pull through and then snip it off and you are finished weaving in your ends. Now, to make the dishcloth, you're gonna do exactly the same thing. You're just going to begin with 51 chains, and you're going to come across in your first row with single ch crochet chains, I'm sorry, single crochets, and you'll have a total of 50 stitches in each row. You'll repeat the rows until you get to 64 rows, and it's on your 65th, 65, you're gonna do a row of single crochet totally all the way across. At that point, you can totally be finished, weave in your ends, but as you'll see on this dishcloth, I chose to do, give it a little edge. Um, that I think I like a dishcloth to have a little bit of edge a little bit more finished I'm sorry a dish towel um, than the dishcloth and the reason for that is that um, frequently at least for me I hang my dishcloth on something like usually the 
you know handle for the oven so it kind of gets seen more than um than your you know just dish cloth that you're washing things with so i like it to be a little bit more finished so we're going to put a finish all the way around this towel and then an edging on both edge edges we'll get to that to give the dish towel the finished edging and the finished look that I'm wanting, I'm, I have chain one and turned and gone back over the last row of single crochets with a second row of single crochets. Uh, this will allow me to be able to go all the way around this dish towel with single crochets. So you'll see that we single crochet until we get to the last single crochet on this row. And then we're going to put three single crochets in that last stitch. That allows us to make a corner that we can turn and then go down the side of the dish cloth. Going down the side of the dishcloth can seem a little odd and tricky, but basically you want to approximately put one single crochet in the end of each row. And you'll see kind of at the end edges of each row where you can go in and stick a stitch. It's not quite the same as going through a row of stitches because you're going through kind of the side of the stitches. Do the best you can, keep them as even as possible, um, and just don't worry about it too much. Just guesstimate. Then when you get to the bottom of the towel, again, you've gone all the way down the side, you're going to give that last uh, corner three single crochets again so that you can turn the corner. And then you're going to put single crochets all along that bottom row. In one in each single crochet so you're back to the the way that it's pretty easy except this row may look slightly different for you because you're actually working in the opposite side of your base chain so don't get too worried about it just get approximately 50 single crochets across there you'll see that it's it's not too hard, but estimate this last corner, get those three single crochets in that corner, and then pick up those stitches across the edge. Then you're gonna go back up the other edge of your towel. Uh, again, working one single crochet in the end of each row. And then when you get to the top, you're gonna make your final, uh, your final single crochet, make a chain, get it really tight, and snip off your loop. Then you're left with just uh, weaving in your ends. Except, again, here comes me. I had to put a little fancy edge on each end of the towel. So I will explain that. Now, any of you that know me or are getting to know me will know that I can't leave it at just that. So I chained one and I turned and I decided to put an edge on each end of this towel. So you're going to begin with a single crochet in the first stitch. Then I'm going to skip a stitch and put three double crochets in the next stitch, all in one stitch. One, two, three. Skip a stitch, put in a single crochet. Repeat. Skip a stitch, put in three double crochets all in that one stitch. This makes just a slight scalloped edge on that one end of the towel. Uh, I just liked it as just a little detail and skip a stitch and chain one and just continue across till you get to the end and fasten off and move to the bottom end of the towel and do the same thing. Now you can see, as I get to the end of this row, because I didn't plan for it, I don't have quite the right number of stitches. So I still put in, in the right space there, I've only got two, 
uh, two stitches left. So in the second stitch from the edge, I go ahead and do my three double crochets, and in the last stitch, just put in a single crochet, no skipping there. Pull tight, uh, get your snips and snip your loop, and you're done and good to go. Do the same thing on the other end of the towel. This is what it looks like as it's finished. That one edge is done and it has just a little scallop. Now to work on the other end of the towel, you'll need to make another uh, slip knot and fasten into the corner of your last stitch on that end with a slip stitch. Then you'll need to chain one and put a single crochet in that same space to begin. Then the rest all the way across is exactly like the other edge. And you'll see it's finished and, and all you need to do at the end of that other edge is weave in your ends and you've got a finished project.